Well, we have some great music next door. So as soon as playing you know, jazz chop at the art studio next door. Okay, so um, I'm going to do another test with the uh, graphic back um, digitizer. Um, first thing I'm going to do, obviously, well, with this slide, is I need to pack the shutter and then press it. And now I'm going to need to hold it because I need to leave the lens open for the back. And I'll show you the back here. So that, this is the back. And uh, basically it's put on with two parts. The first part is the graph lock back part and this slides on and this locks into place. And then this slides in and locks into place. And I'm still working on some of the locking mechanisms. So I'm just taping it for now because some of it broke. Uh, but you know, that's how it goes in the venting world. Okay, so now I'm gonna set it up and I'm gonna take a uh, high resolution, large format photograph of uh, the Pusa, which is running now. It's running, so some of the frames might get a little bit of that. Uh, uh, what's the word for when you're stitching and you, it doesn't match? Problem photography, sometimes you need the simplest small item and you've been packed away and you can't find it. Uh, things really get slowed down. So like, I just want like a little piece of black cloth to, to float. <laughs> my brain, look at my brain's going. Um, I need a, little, a small black velvet sheet <laughs> to throw over this because I think I'm, I'm getting a lot of um, wear. I'm just going to have to use this bag instead and try to figure out where the light leak is coming in. If I can, this is not optimal. Okay, we'll see. Maybe Gaffer's taped to the rescue. I bought some of this uh, two inch stuff from Gaffer Power. Shout out to Gaffer Power, I love that company. You should buy all your Gaffer tape from Gaffer Power because they have every kind of Gaffer tape you can imagine. And they are fanatical about Gaffer tape, like I am. I love Gaffer tape. Okay, I'm just going to do this. Oh, there it is. And this is where I'll be photographing. Hey, Shampoo, how's it going? Not bad, awesome. How are you? Good. I was going to sit. I said to see if you're still coming. Mm -hmm. There goes a good problem with this camera. Let me just take a quick. Uh, Oh. Okay, here's the image uh, that I took. Um, and you can see, well, I can see the, the flare or glare here. Um, but you can still see the, uh, the high, um, the high amount of um, resolution you get with the digitizer. I think it's on this one. See here, this is a, it's a little little oil smear here. Um, now, one of the problems of doing a, you know, any object that moves with the digitizer is see it moved here between frames, so it's a little bit um, out of whack. But you know, the purpose of this again was just to to see the glare problem if I could fix it, um, which I couldn't. Uh, ultimately, I determined on this lens that it was the lens. Um, so I switched lenses. I've been having problems with the Graflex Digitizer where it's getting a lot of glare in the image. Um, glare, glare. And uh, I was using this lens. Was it not that one? This lens. 
was using the Technica Sinar. Oh no, no, it's, this is the, the Schneider. See that the Schneider Krushnak Krushnak um, 210. Well, actually, this is one that can go 210 if you take off this part 370. Anyway, um, I was. I put like, you know, I tried to put a hood over it. I tried to find out where the light might be leaking in. And if I put my hand like this, I could sort of stop it, but obviously it'd blur that part of the image. So I feel that this probably just has an image circle that's too big. It's just creating all this, you know, extra light within the bellows. Um, I'll have to research this more later. Um, however, I put, a, uh, I put a different lens on here. I put this Kaltar, for all I know it's made by the same company, but for whatever reason this lens doesn't seem to have any, have any uh, glare. So I have the camera on the digitizer here. So what I do is I'll put it down to around the center. So I'm seeing those um, boxes of paper. By the way, the squeaking noise behind me is the um, Prusa 3D printer. I apologize. I should just put on the lab layer, but anyway. Okay, so now I can see this that it's focused on the on here. Um, my exposure is too high, so I'm going to move that up a bit. Let's get to the second, which is good because it's shooting too low before. I was definitely getting some camera shake and whatever. So now I'll pull this down to the bottom rung. Now I know that I basically do four by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four by seven seems to be the best for this configuration. So I'm going to start here and I just go through. So I'm now in the first row. One, two, three, four. And I just push the camera up. One. Again. I'm basically doing these four shots on each row. <laughs> I need to oil this thing. Of course, I don't oil it. I use wax paper. I need some wax paper. Actually, this build needs a lot of improvements, which I'll do in the next build. Things are moving that shouldn't be moving. <laughs> All right, so I take my four times for I think 28 photographs. Turn the camera off. Take the card out. And now we're going to go to the computer. All right, so these are all the files I. I took with the digitizer, um, so I'm going to select them all. I'm going to copy them, and then I'm going to go to where on this computer I'm making uh, you know, temp folders where I can stitch these these things together. Oh, 222. This is for YouTube. <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> for YouTube. Okay. I'm going to copy these here. Next, I'm going to go and I'm going to open uh, Microsoft uh, Image Composition Editor. I'm going to make this full size. New panorama. I'll go check my fold, check the folder, and then I'm just going to Control A, select all of these. Now, I already know it's going to be camera motion of a uh, planner motion, so I set that here on the right, and then I'm going to go to Structured Panorama, and usually it sort of like figures out what I'm going to be doing in the beginning, but in this case it didn't. So I'm going to go up here. If I just try a few things like this, now I know I captured four across. So I'm just four across, and that looks correct. Now I know that I have the images correct, starting here, serpentine. Now I can go into the auto overlap, and as you see it calculated 30 to 45, which is about right. And so now I can just hit, uh, I can just hit next. So I hit next, and now it's basically going through and it's aligning each image. Now this isn't as simple as it sounds. It isn't about like twisting it, you know, uh, 
right or left or you know in a circular motion it's actually front and back so it has to it's going to make a you know a hypothetical um, a plane that assumes uh, straight lines can go through all the images if you chart a straight line and then it needs to move each image around a you know single point in both all directions to see if, to how it can line it up uh, I'm not explaining this well and maybe I'll just even cut this part of the video out <laughs> okay so uh, now it's com com compo compositing the images is it compositing compositing Compositing? I don't know. Definitely gonna cut that out. Okay, so now here we have the image. I'm gonna use this to straighten it a teeny bit. And once I have it, it doesn't really make a difference. You know, you could straighten it later. But let me just uh, do what I like here. Hit next, and now it's gonna project the panorama, which is basically saying, okay, I'm taking all the calculations I've done, and now I'm gonna create an image. So now I'm gonna just um, I'm going to crop it here a bit. And so, um, well, I'll just say next. So this file is 314 megapixels. So this is a 24 megapixel camera. It's more than 10 times the, uh, the, the sensor's native resolution. And so if we um, zoom in here, you can see uh, the wild uh, amount of um, <laughs> of detail uh, you can capture with uh, using a four by five uh, um, large format camera, and then to export it, I would just say I'm going to pick Superb and uh, export to disk, and just call it a stitch. That's fine. So let's create the image. So I'm going to close out of. Um, Microsoft uh, image composition and now I could I would select here I'm going to do open with Photoshop you know to do this you know if you want to do super quality you would do each picture in raw and then Photoshop change them in raw to JPEG and then stitch them together etc etc so here's the image in Photoshop so if I just did the auto color for sake of argument and auto tone let's just say um, and then I probably just uh, um, probably just uh, well now I'm gonna have to go through and um, uh, all the sensor spots in the sensor. I can never get my sensors clean anymore. I almost don't bother. So just go through, and you see it takes a little bit longer in here because obviously this is a um, this is a huge file. It's 300 megapixels. Um, Zoom out there. Let's go to zero. Oops. Zero. Um, and there you have it. Uh, it's an image create a digital image using a Graflex four x five camera. Uh, not using film. So as you can see, we uh, we took it and within a few minutes, it's developed and uh, ready to go.